A very good evening and greetings of the day for people from different parts of the world, esteemed chief guest and all the members on the digital dais. Today we are here all assembled to assess the power of the youth. The youth are the hope of today and the joy of tomorrow. And what more can brighten the life of any youth when we can give them the chance to be able to affect a positive change. So here we are assembled at the COP 2030 youth uh, ministry or youth, uh, youth edit of the COP 2030. And uh, I take great pride in introducing our community partners who are helping us facilitate these sessions to begin with. Uh, GSFN, abbreviated as the Global Sustainable Future Network, uh, which is from the UK, and it is a collaborative initiative dedicated to advancing sustainability and tackling global challenges within the United Kingdom and across the world. So they have diverse range of stakeholders, including businesses, governmental organizations, non-profit organizations and individuals to collaborate on sustainable solutions. So their primary goals involve championing environmental preservation, advocating for social equity and fostering eco-friendly economic development that is socially inclusive. So the network which hosts frequent events and workshops and projects, which, which is also one of these, which we are here today to promote innovation and share knowledge and encourage sustainable practices in sectors such as renewable energy, sustainable agriculture and green technology. So uh, may I request the members of GSFN to introduce themselves. Thank you very much, you. Uh, Sandhya Shri Balaji. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sri Vidya, for initiating this wonderful uh, youth uh, parliament uh, council or advocacy program for uh, youth. So I'm uh, and uh, I thank uh, the chief guest today, uh, Dr. Mohammed Sahid Al Kindi, for his presence and his time given to us. So thank you very much for your presence. Thank you. Uh, we are highly um, excited about this project. The project especially focuses on youth. And I, I believe uh, Dr. Sri Vidya will do the favor of explaining you more. However, just uh, an introduction from myself for um, uh, GSFN. I'm, founder, I'm Dr. Renuka Thakur, founder of Global Sustainable Futures Progressive Partnership Network. And we are uh, worldwide. Uh, we have more than 6,000 coordinators in 165 countries. And we are not only individuals, but we are networks, uh, universities, and institutions, and government and non-government enthusiastic individuals got together to contribute to climate change and sustainable development goals. So having that perspective of uh, contributing to uh, sustainable development goals and leaving no one behind, I think youth as our future leaders play a very great, low, uh, very important role in shaping and co-creating our sustainable futures. So here I welcome the partnership also from Virgin River from International Intership uh, University, uh, Dr. Ramesh uh, from uh, IGN, and uh, 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 Sri Vidya from EDU, and especially your support, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Mohammed Sahib. So thank you for uh, being everyone being here, and uh, I'm looking forward for a very exciting time in January. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Renuka. Now we move on to introducing our next community partner known as the iGen with Gen in their name. 
uh, we all know it's also recognized like we when I mean, we talk about gen it's gen z and uh, they have unique characteristics uh, they are the tech savvy and uh, they come they they, they ma- earmark the digital era with their access to smartphone social media and the uh, internet and they also have uh characteristics such are individualistic to be pragmatic socially uh, aware and entrepreneurial so our next partner also known as the i i gen uh, or the internet gen uh, synonymous to i i gen they are also called as the institute of green engineers network uh, and uh, the primary focus again is to promote sustainability and respond environmentally responsible practices particularly in the realm of engineering uh just like gsf and they, their objective is also to unite professionals academicians and enthusiasts who share a deep commitment to green engineering and sustainable technology and they also facilitate exchange of knowledge foster networking and collaboration and actively engage in research and development so uh like along with their uh, educational efforts which are aimed at raising awareness about sustainability they also advocate policies advocate uh, bring in advocates for policies and practices uh that brings in an advanced eco conscious engineering and thereby contributing to a sustainable and environmentally conscious future may i request the members of igen to introduce themselves here uh, very very happy ma'am very happy yes. it was very wonderful uh, moment today we all are connected across the globe and very happy and very uh, appreciate uh, dr shividya for the very keen initiative in futuristic thinking of uh, uh, what all the action to be done in cop 20 to achieve 20 30 what all the action to be done keeping in that mind uh, fantastically we completed uh, the one community project and we all are again connected here for the second that is youth very very important uh, we have very strong youth community student community how we can able to uh, connect all the youth here so that uh, coming out with new uh, ideas new uh, maybe after january february we can come out with a combination of uh, uh, three organization with some projects so that uh, we can move on with that uh, so that only uh, my request because we need to have some continuity so conducting events conducting part it is good but out of that some outcome from that uh, the new baby born like a new project baby born and that project we need to take lead by the youth community by the youth community to 2030 like that so this is what my view and my suggestion keeping in that mind we will focus on Uh, so that it will be very uh, good platform because renuka ma'am is there uh, she is connected with across the globe and uh, shri vidya is there and uh, very happy to welcome our chief guest uh, and uh, who connected here a very wonderful person uh, going to be the inaugurate today and uh, we all connected together for stg 17 partnership for the goals and uh, so only partnership only we can able to connect the people across so that is the reason uh, in the when when people in 2015 forming these goals they are, they are very clear uh, they had 16 goal and 17th goal they made it a partnership so without partnership it is uh, uh, there is uh, there is there is no other uh, connectivity so thank you all thank you so much aidan is always with uh, support with uh, executing and uh, making the mother earth green thank you thank, thank you, you ma'am thank you dr ramesh so madam yes, sadhya prabhuji yes sir uh, yes because uh, the chief guest has a very limited time with us so i would like to take the lead from here thank you so much and yes. towards the before we end the session we will have a session we'll have a, a small briefing of other partners that is iiu international internship university and rnd university as well so coming back to our purpose of the theme is that what why we have evolved into this cop 2030 youth ministry is that uh, we know that the world's biggest session had just ended a week before that's cop 28 uh, with dubai as of its headquarters and definitely the takeaways of the uh, cop 28 uh, has 
made the world turn towards us. That was the world's biggest climatic conference that kicked off on Thursday and that were in Dubai Expo City, bringing together 70,000 world leaders, government officials and environmentalists. So with the 2023 UN Climatic Change Conference, that's COP28, which ran until December 12th, the 12th of December, <coughs> has highlighted topics including climatic finance solutions and also the takeaways were remarkable, were really, remar really remarkable. Please allow me to share certain few of those feathers in that crown. The UAE Banks Federation pledged to mobilize $270 billion in sustainable finance. So big clap to all the people who have joined on this team effort. And this was announced on day five of the summit, which was dedicated to finance and the gender, gender equality scheme. <coughs> Secondly, the UN Women launched its Feminist Climatic Justice, a framework for action, which revealed that climatic change will push up to 158 million more women and girls into poverty and lead to 236 more women into hunger by 2050. That was again a warm, the biggest initiative patronizing women empowerment. So big due, due respects to all those people who have participated in this session. Global donors have pledged more than $777 million towards defeating the neglected tropical diseases which affect 1.6 billion around the world. So, <laughs> during the session, our great president, COP28 president, Mr. Sultan al Jaber, launched a pact to cut methane emissions from oil and gas sector. Moving ahead, then US and EU have pledged $3 billion and $2.5 billion, respectively, to assist the developing countries in reducing the green gas emissions, transitioning transition into clean energy. Last but not the least, the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed launched on Friday Altera with a $30 billion climate fund for global climatic solutions. The fund will be allocated $25 billion towards climatic strategies and $5 billion specifically for the Global South. So it was a magnanimous event and with that spirit, we didn't want to leave anything, any leaves unturned. That's evolved. That was the evolution of COP2030 Youth Ministry. How can youth participate in this exclusive schemes which are going to come up? And that has evolved into this virtual parliament that will address on COP consensus by the youth, of the youth, and for the youth. So our youth ministry champions convoy, UNW. UNCC emphasizes engaging, empowering youth from the most vulnerable communities, including indigenous people and communities at high risk. So our youth will seek to promote more inclusive and equitable society that values the contributions of its members. So the role of the youth ministry convoy will amplify the influence of the organizations focused on and led by the young people with the COP processes. So this will entirely the collaboration of the local and the global stakeholders to provide youth capacity building opportunities, establishing mechanisms for funding innovative youth-led initiatives. So such an approach will definitely amplify the youth-led initiatives and their impact within line with the COP processes. So to achieve this, we have established this Youth Ministry Champion Convoy, who will work very closely with all the stakeholders for towards this purpose. So allow me to share my screen for just two minutes. I'll have a very quick run through of all. <laughs> uh, may I be allowed with screen sharing? Please. <laughs> yes, dear. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So hope my screen is visible. Yeah. 
So here we are, just a few more seconds, it should be loading. So on that note, we extend a very, very warm welcome to our Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Saeed al kindi who have been a pillar of support for all these kind of initiatives that we have been working on. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming on the show. And it is really a great honor and privilege to have you with us, Amit Sir, today. Thank you, sir. Along with them, we have our distinguished guest of honor, Engineer Alia al kindi who is the Director of the Government Complaints and Public Relations Offices of SAT Holdings. Thank you. It's a great just pleasure of having you both on our show today, Amit Us. So we have spoken about the Youth Corp and the Youth Ministry. What has evolved into? It has evolved from COP28 Global Youth Statement, which says that it synthesizes the collective climatic policy demands and proposals of the young people who will be coordinated by Yongo, the official children and the youth constituency of the UNFCC. Without taking much time and moving forward, I think this we have briefed. So what is going to be the vision and mission of this COP2030 Youth Ministry is that to enhance participation of the youth, instill education, creating awareness, campaigning, everything, amplifying the voices such that they will be able to amplify the voices, they will be able to share their insights, inferences with all the projects being displayed and manifested and take, taken it up to the global level and to spark into the action wherever it is required and to monitor and engage. This is going to be the vision and mission of our youth ministry on which these are the projects that we will be working on. Climatic adaptation, which will have the recap on the 6th of January. Finance climatic action, which will have the recap on the 13th of Jan 2024. Moving ahead, renewable powerful energy for a safer future will happen on 20th January. Net zero commitments will happen on 27th January 2024. Biodiversity will happen on 3rd February 2024. And last but not the least, the loss and damage and moral imperative to act will happen on 10th February 2024. So, owing to which we are going to have, we are inviting all schools, universities and all the educations from different parts of the globe to participate in this session and to contribute to meet its rationale. So, there we are. Thank you so much. I need to stop sharing my screen now. So, on that note, we extend a very warm welcome to our great chief guest for today, Dr. Mohammed Saeed, Mohammed Saeed Al Kindi. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having uh, your presence amidst us. So, please, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I am, it's my great pleasure to join you in this COP20. 30 Youth Ministry Conference through online organized by Edio Gate Global along with GSFN and IGEN Global. In this occasion, I have the honor to extend my greeting to all the participants who who's are joining this virtual conference from different parts of the world. And I would like to extend my sincere gratitude for inviting me to this important meeting. I understand that this COP2030 Youth Ministry Virtual Parliament indic indicates a virtual assembly of dil diligent youth who are committed and contributing to a social cause, this community represent elevating meaningful youth engagement for climate action, which advocate for the cover, coverage convergence of, la, of like-minded individuals to work toward common objective. The role of young people is always in sustainable development is important in the world. The future of humanity and of our 
planet lies in our hands. It lies also in the hand of today's younger generation who will pass this torch to future generation. We have mapped the road, the road to sustainable development through the youth and, and it will be for all of us to ensure that the journey is successful and it's gain remarkable. The world should realize the role of youth and the contribution of young generation for sustainability. And we should also commit to sustainability and its responsibility to protect the future. The value of environment sustainability exists because of the collective effort of the people. The United Arab Emirates has always highlighted the need for green environment over the past years. The United Arab Emirates also become an international center for countries wishing to discuss the importance of source and resources efficiency, green environment, renewable and clean energy, solar power, climate change, and sustainability. So United Arab Emirates government aspire to build a world-class sustainable system to improve the quality of life. Also, the United Arab Emirates leadership made critical and umptuous strides in the, trans in the transition to a green economy through approving the UAE Green Growth Strategy. Under this strategy, the United Arab Emirates is taking steps to promote the green economy concept at the global level. I should appreciate ADU Gates Global and GSFN and IGN, IGEN Global has taken the initiative of organizing such online meeting to discuss COP 2023 strategies for the efficient and sustainable use of natural resources by effectively adopting sources and resources in the growth of the world. Once again, thank you for very much for all the distinguished speaker, guest, participant from different areas and wishing all of you successful and good luck in all your future life. We must work together to lead the world toward a more sustainable future and collective global effort to address climate change and environment as a whole. I do sincerely hope that this virtual conference will be a real motivation for you all to work with more sincerely. I will extend all my support and cooperation for your all progressive activity. I conclude by thanking the Almighty, the source of all goodness. Thank you once again and all the best to you and to the people participating at this uh, great conference. All the best and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for those inspiring words and uh, for being a source of inspiration, encouragement and motivation for being the pillar of support in taking this initiative forward. Thank you so much. Most Thank welcome. You. Thank you. We Most really welcome. appreciate your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So moving ahead, maybe request uh, Madam Alia Alkindi to share her few insights. Assalamu alaikum and good evening everyone. I'm really sorry, but I came in a short notice. 
First of all, I apologize to everyone that I came late. Apologize to His Excellency and everybody and all the team members. Secondly, I would like to thank Dr. Sri Vidya and everyone who ever attended this event and who are doing such great efforts in order to make sure that the world goes on continuous peace and sustainability and development and warmth and protection for the whole world. Uh, thirdly, um, I haven't actually prepared anything for the meeting, but I thank His Excellency Dr. Al-Kindi uh, respectfully. He has said whatever was I wanted to say and more than that. And God bless you with all the uh, goals and all the uh, uh, points that you are going to put and collaborate in order to achieve these these uh, uh, these programs and these sessions. And uh, once again, thank you very much for inviting me. And it's really an honor and God bless you all. And may Almighty always protect us and keeps us be at peace, prosperity, happiness, health and long life. God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. Being a very passionate educationist, we would like to have you as one of our patrons for all our sessions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for By taking God's it. grace, I will. I will, inshallah. Thank you very much. God sure. bless you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We would like to have you for the whole session. If you would like to just continue with us for the journey. Otherwise, like uh, we will still move ahead, but we'd love to have your questions. Thanks for all those insights and uh, for your support and for your kind words of inspiration, guidance and support. We, we really value it all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So moving ahead with those kind words and inspiration that we have taken from our guests of today, definitely the Ministry of Youth bearing the fly, plate number of COP 2030 is uniquely positioned to facilitate the critical connection between the COP presidency and the youth stakeholders. And definitely we'll be taking it forward where it is going to serve as a vital conduit to streamline youth coordination between the government and the United Nations Framework Convention of Climatic Change, that UNFCC. The ministry can help bridge the gap between the COP presidency and the youth stakeholders by creating more effective and efficient communication channel. By serving as a missing link, the ministry can bring together the younger generation and the policy makers to address the climatic challenge more comprehensively. So our youth ministry convoy will recognize the importance of amplifying the voices of the young people especially from those of the marginalized due to their age, ethnicity, disability, and also of social and economic reasons of, or of different various reasons. So this committee is definitely committed to providing a platform for substantive youth policy input and outcomes that will contribute to a positive social change as Dr. Hindi and also Madam Malia Hindi was mentioning. So to this end, that our youth ministry convoy emphasizes in engaging and empowering youth from the most vulnerable communities, including indigenous people and the communities who are at risk. So through these efforts, we seek to promote a more inclusive and equitable society that values the contribution of all its members. So on that note, we extend a very big warm welcome to all the universities, all the schools, all the education institutions and the youth members of the society to come and join with us and to join with us in, and also we will work on youth capacity building to establish mechanism of funding innovative youth-led initiatives in the school. Thank you so much. Hope that was good. And uh, moving ahead, like uh, we would like to over to Madam Sandhya Balaji. You thank you, thank you, Doctor Vidya. Yes, yeah. you so welcome the I did, uh, other partners to introduce themselves. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah. So I take great pleasure in introducing our next partner, which is International Internship University, which we shortly call IIU, and is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, which is most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs. Globally, it's a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to providing better and virtual education to all young learners of the globe. 
So in a short span of time, IAU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents. And under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Panditsa, who is a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, and he's been providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. And may I request the members present here from IIU to introduce themselves. Dr. Virginia, you're on mute. There we go. Now, thank you. Thank you for being here. I am so excited for the what's coming. Um, I am the partner in growth in business here at IIU. And definitely our decisions are not economic decisions. They're usually educational decisions. And we're very, very excited for the future. We all recognize that our youth is not the future. Our youth is the present. And we need to continue thinking that because they're the ones who are really spearheading where we are going. So I think and I really expect this to be an amazing convoy and an, an amazing conclave. So thank you again for having us here. and. Definitely, Mr. Piyush Pandit, sir, is watching, and I know that we will do him proud. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Virginia. I take great pleasure again in, in to, uh, introducing R&D University, R&D Creativity, which facilitate and promote all research and development in technical and non-technical fields. And uh, the university also gives platform to all people of the world, universe and universe to expose uh, and show their research and development talents and creativities either in cultural or education or on both. So educational growth survey and research facilitate the dissemination of policy issues across the country and international aspect to benefit the entire population. So. Uh, uh, do we have our representative here, Dr. Srivitya, Dr. Vijay Kumar? I don't, I don't see him here. I think we'll move on to IGEN and they can discuss about the projects. Yes. So we, yeah. yeah, we now request the members of IGEN to take roles and talk about the projects. Anyone from IGEN would like to talk about IGEN projects? You are welcome to do so. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Krishna? Krishna? Yes, sir. Ah, you, can, yes, you can just share the information on all our projects, Krishna. Switch on the video and yes. let's start. Yeah. Hello, everyone. This is Krishna, head of Aizen Cycle for me. Now, I would, um, like, I would like to introduce about Aizen SDG pilot projects. Number one, MG Double Nine Challenge. Number two, Aizen Talk for SDG. Number three, Aizen Cycle for me. Number four, Aizen Battery. Number five, Water Max. Uh, today we initiated a sixth one, which is uh, IGEN minus CO2 project. And first of all, uh, we come out with uh, come up on with the first one, IGEN Energy Double Nine Challenge. IGEN Energy Double Nine Challenge is the objective to create awareness about Energy Nine mantras to 99 houses. Along with it, we have to do uh, get uh, feedback from 99 houses after two months. And next one is IGEN Talk FGG, which is uh, uh, creating awareness on sustainable development goal through two minutes video uh, through our uh, Facebook platform. Next, I then cycle for them. In name itself, we have the project objective. What does that mean? Cycle for green action. How we can do? While cycling, we have to do some green action, like uh, creating awareness about energy conservation or water conservation or uh, planting of trees or any green action to conserve Mother Earth uh, green. And uh, next one is um, IGEN Battery. It's a video presentation on um, uh, international reports regarding energy or any sustainable development or sustainability topic to present in a video for two to or 10 minutes. That video will be um, published in our IGEN SDG Plus YouTube channel and that will be useful for all the viewers who are viewing or uh, watching that video. That uh, report will be short, uh, shortized and given as a video in YouTube. 
and next one is hydrogen uh, water bank it is a consideration of water it will be uh, re- released in future and next one is hydrogen uh, yeah. seawood minus seawood project it's uh, we all uh, know about conservation of energy um, everyone do that one but we are not doing the avoid the emission of co2 so we have come out with one project called hydrogen minus co2 project and uh, we will reduce the emission of co2 through um taking energy saving mantras by uh, following and implementing that mantras we can conserve and save the co2 uh, 1.5 kg this is our one project uh, future we will have so many projects uh, through our various partners and an uh, institution and organization with us thank you Is there anyone who wants to there speak from my gen? Who wants to speak about your current project? Anybody else would like to contribute on that project? Dr. Ravijay Kumar Salvia is joining, so I thought we will give him a chance so that before we wind up the session. Yeah. This is only a launch, so if you want, like I can go over this uh, uh, presentation one more time to just tell them about the week wise. Should we do that? I think I'll take a couple of seconds to introduce you even though you don't need introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah here is our program lead and program coordinator Dr. Srividya Sukumar is an educationist consultant governance advisor QA expert for compliance and audits strategic transformational coach for life and business mentor for professional development Artendry training specialist, author, columnist, and she's also a volunteer at UNESCO, UNICEF, Emirates Red Crescent, Al Maktoum Foundation, and Sharjah Social Welfare, among many other organizations. She's a certified life member of World Human Rights Protection Commission as well. So here we have the lady who empower us with this program and. the bunch of other programs we've been doing with her thank you madam sandhya so a uh, quick uh, run through of the scheme of work that you have designed climatic adaptation which will happen on 16th january 2024 is going to talk about these things that is understanding global warming of 1.5 degree projected climatic change potential impacts and associated uh, reasons for concerns that illustrate the impacts and risks of people economies and ecosystems across sectors and regions third is emission pathways and system transitions consistent with 1.5 degree global warming strengthening the global response in the context of sustainable development and efforts sixth point i will be indicative linkages between the mitigation options and sustainable development using climatic adaptation so when it comes to the finance climate reaction which is going to happen on the 13th january we are going to talk about our youth ministry is going to deliberate on assisting in improving coherence and coordination in the delivery of climatic change financing assisting the cop in rationalizing the finance financial mechanism of unfcc cop in measuring and reporting the verifying and extending support provided to developing countries financing the complex complex transition to clean renewable energy and climatic finance as an advantage by tracking and social economic impacts sixth point of will be building resilience to climatic shocks that is a priority and uh, on 20th january we are going to deliberate on renewable energy powering powering a safer future we'll talk on these deliberations making renewable energy technology a global public good improve global access to components and raw materials 
level the playing field for renewable energy and technologies, shift energy subsidies from fossil fuels to renewable energy, triple investments in renewables and renewable energy powering a safer future. These are going to be the deliberations for renewable energy. Moving to net zero commitments, which is going to be deliberated on the 27th of January 2024. Our COP28 Youth Ministry will deliberate on resilience to disruption caused by climatic change, standards for net zero emissions pledged. And third is uh, third point will be nationally determined contribution, that is NDC, a climatic action. Right compensation targets, invest in carbon markets, greenwashing to net zero, and the global effort to reach net zero. So, moving ahead, biodiversity, a strong nature defense against climate change, will be deliberated on 3rd February 2024. We'll have the pointers as Convention to Biological Diversity, Convention on Migratory Species, that is CMS, Ramsar Convention. International Plant Protection Convention, Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, that is CITES, International Treaty on Planet Genetic Resources for Food, International Whaling Commission, IWC. So last but not the least, we are going to deliberate on loss and damage, a moral imperative to act. But on the 10th of February, our COP 2030 ministry will deliberate on loss and damage is the context of climatic change adaptation limits a key point to understanding the losses and damages losses are claims are disproportionately experienced in vulnerable vulnerable developing countries future losses and damage will rise to increase global warming limitation to adaptation stopping to protect against climatic effects so with that that will be a grand finale where each one of the volunteers, each one of the uh, COP2030 youth ministry person will be given a bat which they will be taking forward for, through the project and until they reach the next target that is going to be represented in UNESCO. Thank you so much. Hope Dr. Vijay Kumar Sarvi has joined. Not it? With that, we come to the end of this session. Thank you so much. Thanks for everybody who has joined us on the session. And uh, we really appreciate it. We really appreciate your presence. And with all these projects, with all these rational, with all these objectives, we are going to move forward towards our contributions for the community. Over to Madam Sanjay Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vidya. Uh, thank you, Madam Sanjay Thank you, Dr. Vidya. Yes. Maybe request to... Uh, yeah, he is joined now, once again, he just joined. Yeah. There we are. So, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to all of you. I welcome all of you on this international platform for SCOPE to 2030. And uh, we are seeing a good initiative from all the partners, all the activists and initiative people from all over the world. So uh, it is the, we can say, a collaboration of uh, yours and our organizations, that is uh, Research Innovation Startup University, International Research and Development Community Organization, USA, India, SDG Club India International, Happiness Club Indoor International, uh, International uh, Internship University and all of you. So as you know that uh, we all are working for the SDG Sustainable Development Goals and uh, the total we have the 17 goals but uh, we believe that uh, there are, if we uh, see the micro studies that there are 700 or we can say 7000 goals because you know that uh, each goal is very wide and having a micro study says that uh, this works requires so many innovations, it requires so many management of the innovations, so many creativities, and you know that our mind is a thick lab. So all the minds of the creative people and activist people, they are uh, working for the world, they are working for the innovations, they are working for the patents, they are working for the research, and whatever the qualities, creativity they have. So. As you know, that's a COP 2030 is a, uh, again a great platform for all of us 
एंड वर्चुअली हियर वी आर वर्किंग एंड वर्चुअली वी आर वर्किंग फॉर एज यू नो दो मेनी मिनिस्टर्स एंड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स एंड दी कैस एंड द डेलीगेट्स ऑफ द कंट्रीज हैज विजिटेड द यू ए एंड द यू एज अ वी कैस ए ग्रेट प्लेटफॉर्म टू वर्क for the uh, for the world as uh, the uh, uh, dr shri vidya sukumar the initiative women as you know the women's power the women's power is a great power in all over the world and in this uh, we can say uh, this cop 2030 virtually the women's uh, <laughs> collaborations and women's uh, uh, we can say the take part and their act, uh, activations are very much great so we have to improve the biodiversity we have improved the uh, uh, our environment we have improved the earth we have improved the whatever the education uh, and borrelative uh, education borrelative actions so climate change and you know that today we are seeing the so much so many disasters so many uh, weakness so many uh, hurdles so many interference by the nature so whatever the technology we have whatever the innovations whatever we are seeing the artificial intelligence iot robotics machine learning and chat gpt and we are seeing and uh, uh, this ai based chat gpt but what about the climate what about the earth what about the biodiversity bio diversity we are seeing animals are suffering from so many diseases we are uh, Uh, lagging uh, such type of uh, technologies which will be useful for for climate change biodiversity uh, diversity and similarly uh, so many uh, races and species are now fallen down that that species are very much uh, we can say uh, they that that take part a good initiative and they take part a good uh, cycling of our food chain cycling of our whatever the lives we have cycling of removing the so many diseases as you know that uh, we are we have faced the covid and uh, this covid is uh, also by some type of racial species so uh, uh, so how we have to improve because uh, so many species of the big organisms are now uh, fallen down and uh, they are now removing from our list so we have to maintain such type of species which cope up with the environment and they are giving us the environment very sincerely and very effectively because you know that before 100 years the immunity power of a human was very much good and it has a good efficient person uh, efficient women and men but today we are saying that a child has a, a infant rate is very high and the child is getting so many diseases in uh, we can say uh, up to the 10th year the uh, the uh, the youth are now facing the uh, the uh, diseases of uh, heart attack brain tumor in 20 years so why they are uh, today we are seeing the teenagers are now in a psychological uh, disturbance they are getting the distresses they are getting the tensions so why this because we are far from the biodiversity uh, we are from uh, we are very much far from the biology biological science we are very much far from the natural whatever the natural uh, livings we should have so that we can say the our bio organism we can say our bio environment our bio environment is very much disturbed so climate change and we are facing that uh, some at the some part of the country there is so much hot as as some part of the country there is so much cold at that cold also uh, 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 suffered our life uh, because we are totally depend on the artificial life and we are totally depend on our see we what those who are talking about that those who are the activists those who are the leaders who are working on that they are also getting suffering from their lifestyle so how we have to cope up how we should do so that we should we have uh, the solutions of this body that whatever the persons who are actively take part here that is for the speaking for the speech we must do what we want to do that is to cope up our life changes whatever the lifestyle we have we have to uh, we have to work with our this bio, bio uh, diversity we have to work with our bio environments we have to work for the climate 
what we should do we have to improve the species we have we have to improve the green environment as a species and if there is some intellectual law patent law then we we are working <laughs> for that and let's collaborate for to work because as you know we have the research university startup university was again we are uh, developing one university we have registered that is the sustainable development goal university before that our research university startup university has the uh, slogan of sustainable development goal with right direction and right metric and now we are again establishing a one a specific university that is the sustainable development goal university and however here also we will not give any we can say diploma we will not give any uh, uh, degrees uh, any whatever the certification we will give <coughs> we will work on the practical work those who want to develop the world let's come those who want to develop the uh, environment the climate let's come so for that practically we want to work on it so uh, thank you very much as it is a great prep prep for uh, all of us and uh, however the is this iiu internship <laughs> university that is the internship based to uh, <coughs> motivate the people and to give the skilling power to the people for the actual work so such type of uh, we can say the collaborations between the such type of universities who actively take part for the uh, work for the world for the sdgs and whatever we want to do for a good life and we are not uh, we can say that ki other universities uh, are uh, ha- having the less uh, uh, access they are also working good because knowledge we want the degree and certifications we also require and we have to uh, uh, we can say uh, uh, appraise we have to uh, uh, give promote such type of universities for, for the degree and diploma but we are the uh, we are the persons who want to work actively so that uh, that's why we are not giving any certification but certification is required and those universities who are giving the certification who are giving the degree and diploma that is very important and we would like to work with such universities so let's come and all of you are working very good very effectively and we say that every person on this platform uh, are giving a good uh, uh, we can say the directions to the whatever the future we want to do and uh, with our generations and the our next generation thank you very much have a nice day Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. So Vishnu. Yeah. Uh, we now open the floor. If there's anybody who wants to add on anything, anybody who has not spoken who would like to speak, we would like to give a couple of minutes and then go for the closure. Yeah. Thank you. maybe uh request dr virginia to share her thanks yes on behalf thank of you all of us, of on behalf of yeah. all of us. Exactly. thank you thank you dr virginia thank you so much for giving me this honor um first of all we want to thank you dr shivaria um we want to thank all the organizers i know that this is not something that's done by one person although sometimes one person thinks about everything but we know that following up this major event um definitely we had to make something of it and really continue amplifying the voice we also want to thank every single participant that's been here today and who's contributed to the event today and what's coming in the future i am totally looking forward to january i want to thank also educate global gsfn igen global r&d creativity university and definitely here at IIU we are proud to be one of your partners we really do believe in the power of youth we also believe that is the engine not like i said before not of the future but definitely of the present we want to also make sure that every single person that participates today commits to really collaborating for the world that we all deserve we all deserve a sustainable a free any prosperous world and the only way we can do that is really putting action into words these events these major global events mean nothing if we don't really put 
everything that we decide that we're going to do into action. So how do we pass from the intention to the action? That is what we're going to be embracing in the next following weeks. I invite you all to follow us and to be with us in this amazing, amazing uh, four to five weeks. So thank you so much again, Dr. Shavidya, for allowing me to say goodbye and thank you to all. Thank you. Yes, over to Madam Sandhya Balaji. Yes, we are here at the conclusion of the launch, but I would like to leave with a small message. We are all aware of the famous quote, ask not what your country does for you, but what you would do for your country. So adapting from that, I would like to say, ask not what Mother Nature gives to you, but ask yourself what you can give back to Mother Nature. And that's all we are going to work about in the next few weeks. And as Dr. Virginia said, bring the action into from our words, bring it to action, make it a reality. So let us bid goodbye by saying to and hoping to reach the Vasudeva Kutumbakam and the sustainable global world soon. Thank you. Big thanks to all of us. Thank you for from all of us, to all of us, and for all of us. So that's where we are, and I hope to see you all on the 6th. Thank you so much. Thank you, one and all. And uh, His Excellency is still with us on screen. I could see him. So with due respects to him, thank you so much, sir. Thanks for all your support. Thank you so much. You have been always our inspiration and will remain so forever. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank, thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you all. Thank you all. All the best. New year, new beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.